Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be making a gaming oscilloscope. Um, kind of a joke, but uh, yeah, I got, uh, I, I got a hand-me-down oscilloscope not t too long ago. Uh, it was non-functional. It, it's basically a computer. I didn't record the repair process because I don't really do PC repair. It's not my thing. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a little bit of a process getting it back working. I have it working now. Uh, and since I have it apart, I was like, eh, it's an old computer. Let's, let's give it a little upgrade. So I'm jokingly calling it the, the gaming oscilloscope because I'm adding more RAM to it in this video. And we'll just take a look at the inside of the oscilloscope too. But it's a, it's a text, Textronics oscilloscope. It runs on Windows 2000. Uh, I'm probably going to upgrade the hard drive in the future, but not in this video. So all what we're doing right now is adding uh, more RAM to it and just taking a look at the oscilloscope. It's actually a really neat oscilloscope, but I, I need to get it back together <laughs> so that way it's not spread across the office in parts. Um, I, I have a new workbench coming in the mail. I need to assemble my new workbench and I'm gonna need as much room in here to do it as possible. So uh, yeah, probably won't have any more repair videos up until after the workbench is built. Uh, I may do a video on assembling the workbench just you know, for the heck of it. And they'll let you guys kind of see the office a little bit more than you normally do. Uh, let's uh, let's get right to this and take a look at the uh, oscilloscope. So let me uh, just first bring the oscilloscope over here. We'll take a look at it and then uh, I'll start uh, kind of messing with it. Okay, well, just because of the sheer size of this thing, um, I'm gonna just work with it from on the floor. Uh, so yeah, just, just deal with it. It's a different angle. Let's go ahead and just pull the motherboard out and take a look at it. So the motherboards, this back one, there's really technically two computers inside here. You have the uh, Intel motherboard here that uh, it's the computer part of it. And then there's a power PC um, motherboard that goes into the PCI slot that uh, kind of does the screen and, and the oscilloscope work. Um, so let me go ahead and just pull this guy out of here so that way we can take a look at it. Um, so to do that, you first have to take all the shielding off of here. This thing is just absolutely covered in shielding. You have you have plastic housing and there's just layer and layer of plastic housing. And then after you get all the plastic housing off, you can get the shielding off. So it's not fun to take apart. There's there's a lot of a lot of little pieces to this that you can lose. So to get it apart, once you do that, you just slide this out the back end of it. So it, it comes out and then you uh, unplug. So that's the uh, power going from the, the little power PC board does the power distribution. And then we have another power plug down here, which is your square one going to the um, CPU, I believe. And then you have two uh, uh, IDE connections. The, um, the plug for the power button and all of that is the ribbon cable one. And you have a USB plug too, which is that guy right there. So once you get those all unplugged, then you have the motherboard free. So that's the uh, motherboard. It's a pretty, pretty old motherboard, but it does actually have uh, SATA connections on there too. So that way you can upgrade to some SATA stuff. I don't know if Windows 2000 supports anything SATA though. So I'd have to have to look into that. You might be stuck with all IDE stuff um, with, with Windows 2000. So that's the motherboard. Let's go ahead and flip it around so we can take a look. So... Uh, what was wrong with it was the the power supply had failed. Uh, it the uh, the 12 volt rail was only getting uh, 11 volts, and the negative 12 volt rail was only going to to negative nine volts. So uh, had to replace the power supply. Uh, when you replace the power supply on this, um, you uh, <laughs> run into a couple of problems. First, the normal power supply is going to have way too many connectors and everything in there. So you're going to have to trim off some of the connectors or else you're just not going to be able to fit it all in there. Uh, all what I left on here was a uh, SATA style uh, power connector. And then um, we have the, um, the Molex connector. And I, I left this guy on here. Uh, the one normally goes to like a video card and stuff. I left it on here for the CPU because for some reason I thought I needed it and then I remembered it, that that power actually came off of this power PC board. So yeah, this is the, the little power PC one, um, power PC logo. Hopefully you can see it. Um, so what this one does is it's basically the video card and does the, uh, it, it, it's, it's basically a Linux computer uh, going on there. So it, it boots separately. The uh, floppy drive is uh, over USB, so it's just got 
one little connector there. The um, hard drive is IDE and so is the DVD drive. It has a DVD drive over here on the side. Uh, here, take a look at that. So it's one of those laptop style uh, DVD drives going in there. So yeah, had to trim down the power supply to, to make it work. And I also had to add what, some of the cables that were coming out of. The only thing special about the old power supply is this connector here. Um, it, it had some uh, current sensing cables that went around the plug. So that way it could kind of tell how much current the whole thing's pulling and compensate for it. That's the only modification. Uh, on only major modification I did was uh, replacing the wires coming in, into the plug on there uh, with, with the other ones that had the current sensing going across it. Um, so did have to make that change to the power supply. And then again, I just, I trimmed off uh, a whole lot of the, the uh, power connectors off of it. Uh, I went with the Corsair because it was cheap. Uh, it was just a, a cheap used one. Most people would probably have something like this laying around. I did not, so I turned to eBay and uh, got it for like 30 bucks. So I uh, got, a, got a power supply uh, to, to make this thing work. Um, let's just push this in and flip it over. So underneath, this is the actual oscilloscope itself. Let's take a look at the uh, motherboard up on the workbench now. Okay, so here's the motherboard. Uh, I don't think you guys can read it, but it is a Intel desktop board uh, D. 865 GLC. Um, it does have a custom BIOS on it because the splash screen is uh, different when it uh, posts. So uh, uh, BIOS is custom. Uh, I'm going to guess this is probably the EEPROM that the BIOS is on, but I'd, I'd have to uh, do some homework and look it up. But uh, yeah, so you, you'd need a dump of the BIOS off of one of these for doing a conversion, I would assume. I don't, I don't think you could just use one of the off the shelf ones of these in here and it, it just work. Uh, I think you would need to, uh, clone the, the BIOS over from, from this guy over to the other one. I, so yeah, not, not sure. This one just has a marking on it. That's why I uh, assume that it's something that they did some work on. Uh, it's got a little Sharpie mark on there. Uh, but maybe they just mark that chip as they go down the line of flashing their own BIOS on there. Uh, not really sure, but, uh, yeah, so this is, this is the motherboard. Um, so what we're going to do today is take this Ram out, which is the original, um, it is uh, 512 megabytes of DDR, um, and it's, uh, I guess the speed's uh, 333. Uh, so we're going to replace that with um, this guy right here, which is one gigabyte DDR DIMQ. Uh, so yeah, same thing, just one gigabyte sticks. So we're going to put two of these in there. Uh, I could I could put uh, another 512 on each of these and make it three gigabytes, but I, I think going from uh, 512 to to the uh, uh, the two gigabytes is enough of a jump up on this uh, than before. I've already replaced thermal paste underneath here on the um, on the CPU. I also now have a bag of spare parts for it because I didn't know what was wrong with it. Um, so I ordered a, uh, spare CPU for it cause it was all of $8 to get a, <laughs> a replacement CPU. So I have a spare CPU. I have spare Ram. Um, so yeah, I got some spare parts for this thing. Um, I, I may get another one of these motherboards eventually, uh, just cause they, they were also really cheap. It was like 20 bucks to, to get one. So just nice to have spare parts for this thing with, with how old it's getting now. So yeah, it's, this is really just a regular computer, per, pretty simple. Um, and you can use it as a computer too. Uh, it, it, it would be nice if this wasn't right here blocking the, uh, video card slot. Cause you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind putting a decent video card in here, but yeah, there's your back panel IO. Uh, the nice thing is we have a, a parallel port and we have a COM port, so this thing will be able to support some older uh, tech coming across the bench. Uh, so that's uh, another reason why I really wanted to get this thing up and running is it give me a old Windows 2000 computer to use too. So I, I now will have a Windows 2000 computer and a really nice oscilloscope 
that's a 500 mega, uh, megahertz uh, scope. So yeah, that this scope's more capable than I am. Uh, I also replaced the battery here. So it's got a, a new uh, CMOS battery. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's uh, get this thing put back together. Uh, I'm just gonna slide this back together and I will show the operation of the uh, oscilloscope. So uh, no need to really show assembly because I didn't show disassembly and it, yeah, it's it's a pain. It's a pain to put, put together. All right, it's time for the big reveal of the gaming oscilloscope. Now, one of the things I thought about doing was putting RGB fans in there and thought, ah, whatever, but you know, with the way this vent layout is, well, with the way the vent layout is, uh, it's never gonna get any light out of there anyway, so no point in doing that. So let's see if we get the, the blue screen that it gives sometimes. I think the hard drive's starting to fail on this thing. Sometimes Windows doesn't boot. Uh, we got past it though, so no blue screen. Uh, I'll fast forward from here so that way y'all don't get to remember how slow uh, Windows 2000 boots on a spinning um, hard drive. All right, so we got it booted up. Um, let's go ahead and hook this up. So there we go. We got a nice little square wave coming off of the oscilloscope here. So yeah, this is my favorite feature right here, the multi-zoom. Uh, so let you get uh, two zooms off of the same thing and it shows you where it zoomed in at on it. So you can see the whole thing and see if you have any weird peaks or anything going on there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my new favorite feature here of this, uh, oscilloscope, but yeah, this thing, super awesome, way more capable oscilloscope than I am capable of using, uh, and, uh, definitely more capable than, than my other oscilloscope. So my normal daily driver is this, um, is a Siglet right here. That's that's my normal daily driver. It's a uh, pretty new uh, oscilloscope, uh, and it, it is a very capable oscilloscope. It's um, so yeah, the Textronic. It is uh, 500 megahertz and five giga samples a second, uh, while the Siglent is 100 megahertz and one giga sample a second. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty significant difference in specs there. Uh, this one has some features that that one does not have. Uh, this is significantly newer <laughs> than that one. Uh, but yeah, this screen is really good on here. I know the camera's not really capturing it, but this is a crystal clear screen here, and the, the viewing angle's perfect no matter what way you're looking at it. So super impressed with uh, the screen on here. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this oscilloscope. I mean... Uh, I, I don't think I could be happier with something that was uh, given to me for free too. So uh, yeah, this the, this cost me all of the thirty dollars for the replacement power supply in it. Um, so yeah, uh, I can't say thank you enough for <laughs> the donation. Um, it's pretty cool to to get to work on it and see the inside too. Uh, but yeah, so let's get back into the gaming oscilloscope. So what, what we have here is an RGB keyboard and RGB mouse, um, a Textronic oscilloscope, which is a also just a uh, Windows 2000 machine. So I need to install I need to install Unreal Tournament on here and uh, and and actually play a game on my gaming oscilloscope. Okay, guys. So no gaming oscilloscope is complete without a video game to play. And yes, I could have been lame and installed Doom on here, but I mean, come on, everybody installs Doom. And besides, Unreal Tournament is definitely a better game. All right, so let's get these oscilloscope probes out of the way because we're doing some important gaming here and not, uh, and not work. So let's see here. I haven't played in a while. Let's just start a practice session. Uh, start. Uh, maybe it's... Okay. Uh, oh, it's not WSD. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh... 
There we go. This one's my favorite. <laughs> I killed myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm playing him in spots. That's kind of sad that I died. All right. Well, that's uh, that's enough gameplay for me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the gaming oscilloscope that's perfectly capable of playing uh, Unreal Tournament, which is my all-time favorite game. Uh, I'll, I'll have to run an Ethernet cable out here so that way I can, um, you know, kick all y'all's asses on Unreal 99. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. I, I hope you enjoy the comedy of putting a game on this thing. Um, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.